Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since we've looked at TikTok, honestly. In fairness, it's because that app irons on my brain workers like nothing else. But there's been a community slash culture, if you will, that I have a few questions for. I'm in my Lana era, apparently. And that corner of the app would be none other than the mental illness community. Yeah, we're going there today. I'm sure I'm not gonna regret this at all. If you like these kinds of videos, by the way, feel free to subscribe. Before we do get into everything though, you might be noticing that I'm wearing a different sweater. And that's thanks to today's sponsor, ThreadUp. If you haven't heard of them before, ThreadUp is an online consignment and thrift store. I'm a really big fan of them just because honestly, I've never really caught the physical thrifting bug. Over the years, I've really wanted to get into thrifting more often or just buying secondhand in general. But every single time I would go into a thrift store, it felt like all I could find was like, old minion merch with ketchup stains on it. But ThreadUp just makes it a lot easier because you can sort through everything by item, size, brand, or color, and there's new items every day. Basically, it's the perfect combination between the ease of online shopping, but you still get the perks of buying secondhand, whether that's a good deal or just being better for the environment because you're buying used stuff instead of new clothes. I thought I'd show you guys some of the stuff I picked up recently. One of my favorites is definitely the scarf from Missoni. This thing had an estimated retail price of $159 and I got this for $50.99. It's definitely giving art teacher, so I decided that I'd give it a very art teacher outfit to go with it. It's easily my favorite part of the look. It's like such a fun scarf. And it's great for spring too, because it's not like some big bulky thing. It also goes really well with this bag that I got too. I'll put a better picture up. This was originally from Marc Jacobs and it had an estimated retail price of $378 and I got it for 93. I've been looking for a puffy bag for ages at this point and it's just perfect. It has a ton of space and I can wear it either as a tote bag or crossbody. But I also got this like hoodie sweater thing that I paired with a scarf that I also got from ThreadUp that's originally from Anthropology. Both of these are so incredibly comfy and warm, which is really great because it's somehow still snowing here. I also got two flannels because I'll never betray the comfort and ease of leggings with a flannel. I just really like these color combos. It's nice and simple, it's comfy. Oh, and I got a silly hat. I love this thing. I think it's so cute. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're looking for new clothes with spring coming up. And you can actually get 30% off your first order with free shipping if you use my code Casey. So I definitely take advantage of it if you're looking to do some shopping. But otherwise, thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring and let's get back into the video. All right, with that out of the way, I'll be honest, when I was kind of going into this video, it did feel a bit daunting just because I feel like mental illness content these days is kind of turned into quite the behemoth online. There are just a lot of different types of content that fall under the umbrella of mental illness content, but I feel like a good place to start is probably the most common type that you see on TikTok, which is the whole style of signs you have blank. Because these videos are everywhere, but the signs themselves are a little bit general. Just a little bit. Okay, I'll start off with this one. Things I didn't know were related to ADHD. Sorry, ADHD. Listening to one song on repeat. I do that. Emotions go from zero to 60. Yeah, I'd say I do that too. Skin picking, intrusive obsessive thought. Yeah, I, I do all of this stuff. I'm not totally sold on this though. I think we need to watch one more. All right, this one says six signs you may have ADHD. Adult edition, what's going on here? You are mentally ill, but in a sexy way. This is not the adult stuff I was expecting. This is kind of boring. Out of the six things that she lists in this TikTok, I'd say that I identify with probably like five of them. So I guess case closed. I have ADHD, according to the pharmacy of TikTok, of course. We'll put that in the fine print. In all seriousness though, I think we need to stop taking medical advice from people with fake vines in their room, coming from somebody with fake vines in their room. Hey. From personal experience, I can tell you there is nothing going on upstairs, just more vines, maybe a bit of lint. In fairness though, those two examples can get away with the fact that they titled their videos with things I didn't know were related to ADHD or signs you may have ADHD. So there is some wiggle room for deniability there, but this guy on the other hand just flat out says that generic things like being a perfectionist or unmotivated are signs that you didn't know you actually do because you have ADHD. So you better get that sorted. Please give me Adderall. The reason I don't love this kind of content, regardless of whether it's directly telling you you have or could have ADHD or any mental illness for that matter if you show these signs is because it's pretty obvious that the creators that make this kind of content try to use as general signs as possible because their content will perform better if they do. The more people that see their videos and think, damn, I do that, maybe I have ADHD, the better off they are, which is why it isn't surprising that a lot of mental health content you'll see is incredibly surface level and more focused on being shareable than informative, which is incredibly harmful when you remember just how many young people are on TikTok seeing this stuff and taking it at face value. Like it's freaky to remember that TikTok at this point has a lot more visibility than Tumblr ever did, and we're still seeing the impact that website had on teenagers at the time when it came to mental health. Like what's gonna happen in a few years? It's also a completely other beast to tackle when you think about how 
how most of these creators then get stuck in a box, where their signs you have videos are their bread and butter, and you wind up with an 18 part series on things you didn't know you actually do because you have ADHD. Like how many things could there possibly be that you're confident aren't spreading misinformation at that point? ADHD is definitely the new hot mental illness on the block, to milk for content at least. But by no means is it the only one. Anxiety is another really popular one where you'll see videos like this pop up, which I feel like this girl just made as strange as possible to go viral. But of course, very relatable content. I do this all the time. There was also a sound trend for anxiety that was trending on the app a while ago. I can actually be a guinea pig for this one, so I'm excited. Apparently listening to this song is gonna make me do some wacky things, so get ready. I get so easily, my this is immediately reminding me of that video of Dobby the Elf just losing his mind, but like not in a good way though. That video was funny. This is just kind of making me sad. I don't really understand what part of the song is making this girl act the way she is right now though. Cause she looks like she's stopping just short of scaling a wall. Like the song is bad, but it's not that bad. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It's not like they put on TikTok's new bisexuality anthem. I'm not a raging full on lesbo. Not my circus, not my monkeys though. We need to get back to this. It wasn't just this girl who was acting a bit extra in her videos though. Like this girl who also did the trend looks pretty horrified as well. So. I honestly feel a bit left out. I just feel like more was expected from me. Like I was supposed to hit the Quan when it came on. Or a wall. But as I'm sure a lot of you would assume, since these reactions are a bit dramatic to say the least, a lot of people did have some pushback for them. One of the common responses to this trend was other users with diagnosed anxiety reacting to the sound and showing that they had zero reaction to it in comparison. And I think this is where the problem with reducing a mental illness to a TikTok trend in the name of awareness becomes dare I say a little problematic. Because all people drumming up a reaction for the camera for these trends does is start pointless debates and could potentially convince younger people that this is what anxiety looks like, which honestly bastardizes it more than anything. Like you could almost mistake this video for someone who thought that anxiety wasn't real and was clowning people who claim to have it. But this kind of content keeps showing up because over-dramatized videos do well on TikTok and by no means is it the only kind. The other really shareable mental illness content I'd say is pretty similar to these signs you have blank style of video you see a lot, but I'd say is less nefarious on the end of the poster. And that's when people will go onto places like TikTok or Twitter and share experiences from their own mental health journey that others will then take out of context to use to diagnose themselves. A recent example actually that I could not believe how on the nose this ended up being was when this TikTok went viral. Thank you, my child is completely fine. That TikTok ended up turning into a viral tweet that said, just found out chills means you have anxiety, which then went on to get replies like this. I thought I low-key had Tourette's and I wasn't gonna say anything. I found this online, now I'm questioning if I have Tourette's. You couldn't get a more prime example of how harmful this pipeline is. Like how do you get from someone saying that they found it from their therapist and likely multiple sessions that the chills are an effect of their anxiety to then preparing to diagnose yourself with Tourette's. The bar is in hell, by the way, and this is basically a DSM-5 version of broken telephone. I will say in fairness, this tweet did not go down without a fight. The quote tweets on this are a mess. But in response to the criticism, the original poster had actually tweeted out this screenshot with the caption, you get your medical info from TikTok, you're just cold. Google is fucking free goofy. And the screenshot is just confirming that the chills can be a sign of anxiety. And the thing is, she's not wrong technically. If you put into Google, are the chills a sign of anxiety, it's gonna give you answers like this, which validate your assumption that made you search in the first place. But if you were to Google for the chills and leave the anxiety part out, you'll see that people experience the chills for a lot of different reasons. Anxiety showed up initially because you put it in the search to begin with. The whole chills means you have anxiety narrative started because one person made a TikTok about their personal experience, which then went on to go viral and now other people are taking it out of context to apply to themselves. And now that misinformation has been spread to hundreds of thousands of people that could potentially misdiagnose themselves based on it. And obviously this is only one example. There are many misconceptions about tons of different illnesses. Since we're talking about Googling already, I feel like this is probably a good point in the video to talk about a common rebuttal a lot of people have when it comes to the topic of self-diagnosing, which is that getting a diagnosis can be quite expensive and a lot of people just don't have that luxury. Which of course is true, but does that mean that you should be turning to social media apps out of all things that have been shown to peddle misinformation about mental health when you're trying to understand your possible symptoms? Probably not. And not everyone who's self-diagnosed is someone who's just not in the position to be able to get a diagnosis. Some people just like to lie for attention online. And a question I wanted to try to answer in this video is, 
Why would anybody do this? Why would somebody want to fake a disorder? I think we can actually look back at Tumblr for an explanation on this because illnesses like depression, anxiety, and OCD were to Tumblr what ADHD and DID are to TikTok today, in that they were the mental illnesses that were constantly intertwined into people's online personalities, content, and aesthetic to the point where people would want to fake them to be in with the group. You still see this today with the whole sad girl thing going on right now that people throw onto anything and everything. If you drink iced coffee or you like Phoebe Bridges or Mitski, Congratulations, you're depressed. When half the time the artists themselves don't even identify with the archetype that their fans are building online based on themselves and their music. New Mitski, it's a big day for sad witches with a B. You know, the sad girl thing was reductive and tired like five, 10 years ago and it still is today. I mean, I get this person means really well and I appreciate them, but let's let's retire the sad girl shtick. It's it's over. I just think the current state of the internet where you have people obsessed with attaching a buzzword and it's coordinated internet personality type to themselves and there being a never ending pit of content that encourages that behavior is exactly why mental health conversations and ones about other disorders online almost never go further than the surface level awareness of it all. It's just a feedback loop of people reminding each other that they're also experiencing it. And I think the combination of people intertwining their likes and dislikes so heavily with their mental illnesses and the state of mental illness content online is why people misdiagnose themselves with disorders disorders based on small similarities all the time. The conversations online are surface level. So how do you expect people to not come to surface level conclusions? And I think this is where as people living with mental illness, we do have to take a tiny bit of responsibility. You can't expect everybody online to view your comments about your mental illness with the same nuance that you have because you're actually experiencing it. I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with making content or jokes out of your illnesses. It's none of my fucking business, do whatever you want. But at this point, I just feel like we can't be surprised that of course passerbys are gonna engage with that content and either come to conclusions about themselves based on it or find an incentive to fake an illness to feel like they're more a part of that community. I'm not saying it's right by any means, but I just don't think we can be surprised. Like, look at this TikTok. Four signs you have depression. You never get out of bed. You stay up all night. You always put others before you. You always feel left out. I mean, this video could also double as a sign for the grandpa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but okay. Off the bat, I will say I love the creativity on this one. Lost opportunity on the song choice though. The Pretty Little Liars theme song was quite literally right there. But more importantly, anybody would watch this and probably just immediately scoff at it because these things aren't enough to diagnose you with depression. Yet there are tons of accepted TikToks, tweets, and memes that say things like all Mitski fans are depressed that are just as general as this kind of content and technically contribute to the conversation just as reductively. The message doesn't change whether the person posting it is actually depressed or not because the people engaging with it won't know you enough to know if you're actually telling the truth. I think another element of it all is definitely the obsession the internet has right now with prescribing every possible quirk and experience in their life with some sort of buzzword. You see it a lot with the misuse of words like gaslighting, love bombing, empath, which we all saw in the West Elm Caleb situation, but it even extends to people self-diagnosing themselves with things like IBS. Like you guys are really making people gatekeep irritable bowel syndrome now. What's next? Athlete's foot? Scurvy? The only time I ever wanna hear about someone's bowel movements on the internet is if they're quoting that fiber one bar post from Reddit. If it's not inhaling through my mouth, exhaling through my ass, continuous loud moans are destroying my asshole, I'm sorry. I don't wanna see it. You might've noticed by the way that I haven't really talked about depression content that much. And that's just because I feel like at this point we've all suffered through enough fake deep depression content to last us several lifetimes. But I can't not mention this one TikTok account that I stumbled on while I was making this video. This one is called, I diagnose you with depress, which also has a username that gets right to the point. You have depression. Sweet. Dear struggling person, you may feel like you don't belong anywhere. You may feel like no one likes you, but I'm here to tell you, there is one person that cherishes you and wants you to notice him. His name is Jesus Christ. I know you guys aren't gonna believe me, but I was actually taking this series for a second. Jesus, really? We're going there? The music they chose for this makes it sound like he's looming in the back of your classroom under a hoodie. He made the earth in six days. Who's to say he can't fix you in one day? All right, in that case, what's the holdup then? Let's fix what's going on upstairs. Feels like there's two hamsters fighting over a ping pong ball in here. Which now that I'm saying that out loud, that sounds fun in theory. It's not. I hate to end this video pessimistically, but honestly, going through all the stuff I found on TikTok, I think that app has the potential to be doing damage to mental health conversations online in the name of awareness at a rate and scale much larger than Tumblr ever did. And Tumblr was bad. Don't get me wrong here though. Of course, there are a ton of great resources now on the internet for people who can't get a formal diagnosis or just want to learn more about mental health, but 
damn, do you ever have to shovel through a pile of shit to get there? I know a lot of you guys have shared your experience with mental illness in the past, so if you're comfortable, definitely feel free to share your thoughts below. I'm only one opinion, right? But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also keep up with me on places like Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Goodreads, Spotify, whole nine yards. I'll put it all in the pinned comment down below. And I also have a Twitch and a second channel for smaller commentary videos if you want to check those out too. Remember, you can get 30% off of your first thread up order with free shipping with code Casey. So definitely take advantage of that in the description box below if you want to spruce up your closet. Thanks for watching though. Again, really curious to know what you guys think about this one, honestly. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.